Alrighty, so we are, what now, six, seven days late at this point for a new video? I know it's taken a while. This was actually supposed to be out the day that I'm recording it, but realistically, looking at the time, uh, by the time I release this, no one's going to be awake to actually watch it. So this is going to go up tomorrow for Tuesday. So hello there, Tuesday people. Nice to see you. Sorry it's taken a while to get this out. Uh, we're working on it. I should have another one out this week as well, though, so... Hopefully two of them make up for it. Well, originally, I was looking at, like, Tommy and its new video, and I was like, eh, I'm just not sure if I'm feeling that today. But then I saw that Game Theory dropped a new Minecraft Theory video literally yesterday, or the day like a day or two ago at this point. I mean, let's just, like, dumb it down. They dropped a new one, and I want to see it, because honestly, they keep you entertained the entire way out, because they're so, they're so fast moving. And honestly, I'm just tired, so I really just don't want to sit through something and i need something fast to keep my brain moving anyway though before we get into the actual video if you guys have not yet subscribed go and down and do that before we start today's video also whiteboard crew you want to be a part of it let me know i'll get your name up on that whiteboard i always smack this mic during uh, intros it's very weird anyway though let's get right to the actual video Alrighty, well let's get right into the video Stand aside, Dream. If you thought Clay dropping the mask was the biggest thing happening in Minecraft news this week, think again. Because today well, we've got an ex Well, I mean, Matt, let's let's think about this real quick. Did you see how many people went insane for Dream dropping the mask? Well, I mean, whether insane is in a good way or insane is in, you know, the let's make fun of Dream on Twitter kind of way. The whole Minecraft community and regular Spose community just kind of went nuts. Steve. Yeah, that Steve. Turns out Steve's the latest in a long line of heartless oppressors, conquering lands, sucking out their resources, and then leaving them to die. How do we know this? Well, have you heard of I the guess that's not wrong, Minecraft technically. Legends? The whole thing is pure propaganda. Whole bunch of lies. So, let me ask again, who's really going mask off now, huh, Mojang? You know, I just, I just want to say something real quick. Minecraft Legends is legit just trove. If anyone's ever played Trove, that's literally what Minecraft Legends is. Exact same game. <laughs> internet welcome to game theory the show where we're still trying to bribe mojang into telling us what's canon and they're never going to do that you know is that fact is that did that really happen you know we're not saying that that's exactly what happened but uh, yeah exactly you guys are going to keep that hidden it's going to take mojang how many emeralds we talking about here because whatever it is i will make it happen you see probably friends, an entire Daniel inventory of emerald blocks the world of mining and crafting the yet to be released spin-off title minecraft legends an trove action strategy <laughs> game that based on the first few trailers seems to be bursting at the seams with say it with me now lore i mean just look lore. at this thing. you can yes. see enemy mobs like zombies skeletons villagers and are those baby creepers down there all of them uniting together to follow a mythical They're hero so small, charge against an but so scary force of piglins and uh looking at some of those pig people it looks like they've been hitting the gym recently what is going on with this game well whatever it is it seems important. dude he's he's you know just a, that's a, like a giga chad piglin that you find don't worry the small ones are just like little Little betas. Obsidian surrounded by magma, netherrack, and gold engulfed in flame. Minecraft proper never truly answers why they're there or how they get there. But it seems like the new game is going to answer all of that. Within the first 40 seconds of the announced trailer, we see that is cool, though. bursting up out of the ground. Piglin armies charging through them ready for battle. And again, look at it. Netherrack with gold detailing. They are That's the cool. same thing. It's likely these nether portals got dismantled by the United Overworld Army who broke them up in an effort to prevent more piglin forces from charging on through so right off the bat this new game seems to be positioned as a critical linchpin for fleshing out the lore of minecraft if new mobs and backstory are one of the things that they're putting into the trailer alone can you imagine what must be hiding in the game proper I i'm interested hours pouring over this thing frame by frame to find all its little secrets except there's one t see tiny little problem with that the devs are refusing to tell us whether the game's canon or not well, yeah why would they want to that's the you'll take part, part of the mystery fact nor fiction they're simply part of a tale that's been passed down from villager to villager which is exactly the sort of stuff that we see in the opening seconds of the trailer a villager holding a book and us zooming through the pages into the world of the story because let's face it nothing helps the clarity of storytelling in video games like when a series introduces books of questionable canonicity anyway the god five nights at freddy's oh my god I 
I still don't get it. Figured now would be the perfect time to look into this game to start theorizing about its canonicity and how its story may be able to fit into the wider Minecraft narrative. Because let me tell you, friendos, I don't buy it. I smell something fishy here. Oh, sure. This legend being passed down amongst the villagers, the narrative the game seems to be selling us on is all about a hero who unites the overworld to save us from pig themed invaders. But I don't think it's true. Or at least, I don't think it's entirely true. I suspect that what we're seeing here is actually a warning. A warning from a dying dimension. Huh? It all boils down to what? one word, greed. In one of the early trailers for Minecraft Legends called Fiery Foes, we're told some of the motivations the piglins have for invading. The one I like. Resources? Of a peaceful land that did not know is that a honey badger? Or a raccoon? What was that? Until it was attacked by invaders, spreading the scourge of greed. Huh. Greed. The piglins are attacking because they're greedy? I mean, I guess I can see Well, yeah, they that. like gold. You... gold. When encountering a piglin mob, they'll forget they were attacking you and run straight for it. So clearly, they are motivated by... Yeah, exactly. They want money. <laughs> but something just seems off about this explanation. I mean, gold is actually pretty plentiful in the nether. It's literally all over the place. Sure, the overworld has... They want too, refined it's gold, though. more sparse than in the nether. It would make much more sense if the piglins were interested in diamonds or iron. Resources that you can't naturally find down in the nether but nope they don't really seem to care about those sure you can find diamonds and diamond armor down in the bastion remnants but those feel more like things that they've collected with no real understanding of their use or value considering that they choose to wear gold armor yeah and gold weapons instead of <laughs> yeah they have a very weird uh, way inside. of so the idea that living greed was the thing that led the piglins to the overworld just doesn't make a lot of sense given what we know about their society so if it's not that then what could possibly be the reason for their invasion well this isn't the first time that we've seen interdimensional invasion within the Minecraft universe. Maybe looking at that other instance, we can get a better idea Wait, was idea that from Dungeons? Here in Legends. So come with me as we explore Minecraft's dungeon crawler. Yeah. Very creatively titled Minecraft Dungeons. It's Today, a good a game. I like Dungeons it. Dungeons focuses around the Orb of Dominance, a sentient object that's able to manipulate anyone around it. At the end of the main story, the Orb of Dominance is revealed to be the Heart of Ender, a creature of immense power that looks like you crossed an Enderman with a spider. Of that course, is terrifying. It I hate it. Own dimension, but that's not where the story Yes. Burn it. In the game's DLC, Echoing Void, the player is tasked with collecting six eyes of Ender so that they can travel to the end to finish off the heart of Ender for good. To do this, the player has to fight against Ender Scent, these lanky, hammer-armed, incredibly powerful versions of Endermen. But, um, why have we never seen these things before? Are they just I don't want to see them. A mob to fill out the roster of a new title, or is there an actual lore reason they're here and not in Minecraft proper? Well, as I kept playing, I started to see that this was only the beginning. As we're all very familiar with by now, the end in vanilla Minecraft is a fairly desolate wasteland. You've got abandoned well, yeah. cities, a very limited number of mobs, and a singular type of plant, the chorus fruit. But over in the Minecraft Dungeons Echoing Void DLC, the end actually looks very different. You'll find that there are a number of species and subspecies that we've never encountered before in the regular game. In addition to the... You see, all, like, all those additions in, in like, Minecraft Dungeons... I would love to see those in the main game. Like, clearly they have concepts and concept art of them. If they could just take those and just put all that end stuff into the actual, like, Minecraft end... It would be so, so good Giant to see it. Ender sense that I just mentioned, there are also three types of Ender Like, you can't say you don't want to have that in the game, though. Snarlings. The end also appears to have plant life beyond just chorus fruits, with plenty of grass and trees lining the pathways through the game. This is a huge change exactly. from the Exactly. You want that. that. familiar with in vanilla. It's so nice. What could this possibly mean? Is this just because a different developer worked on the game, or because they were looking for an easy way to expand the franchise? No. And we know this for a fact due to one creature the Endermites. You see, the loss of animal They're and so weird. that happens between Minecraft Dungeons and main game Minecraft is known as biodiversity loss. Something has caused the dimension to undergo a massive decrease in the number and variety of flora and fauna living there. Now, in the real world, biodiversity loss is generally a marker that the ecosystem is dying due to factors yeah. like global warming, natural disasters, or it, it, the two that the I think that apply to the end, invasive species and over-exploitation of resources. So humans, guys. 
got it. These sorts of dominoes fall. Back in 1926, the last of Yellowstone National Park's wolf packs were killed off by employees, all as yep. a part of an effort to reduce danger to humans that might be camping there. Good job, humans. Way to punish animals for the problems that we ourselves create. However, exactly. This <laughs> we're great. Intended consequences by removing an apex predator from the ecosystem. Suddenly, the elk population exploded inside the park, and they began to overgraze. This then damaged the population of trees, mm -hmm. which in turn lowered the number of birds that the area could support. It also made it so beavers were unable to properly build their dams, which caused higher levels of soil erosion along the riverbanks. The erosion and overgrazing impacted the plant life near the this river. This is depressing, Matt. Water, Stop, which please. With the lack of beaver dams, raised the water temperature beyond what the local fish could tolerate. The ecosystem. Oh my God, it's terrible. Spin. The only thing to stop the downward spiral was a reintroduction of wolves back into the ecosystem. And this is what I suspect happened between Minecraft Dungeons and Minecraft. You see, if you've been watching our Minecraft theories for a while, you'll know that was that there's so that much that information. She did indeed show up in the end. Us, humans, whatever you call the exactly. ancestors of Steve. Humans. Call them the ancient We're builders. a problem. As we've talked about in past theories, it's likely that the ancient builders, while on the run from some threat, like say the Warden or Wither, built an emergency portal to the end and then wound up getting stuck there. They were, whether intentionally or not, an invasive species to this new land. And since they had no way home, they had to start using local resources to survive. As we see in dungeons, it's likely that when they first traveled to the end, it was a thriving natural ecosystem. They began to build cities using the local resources. Purple wood and purple That's very there interesting. There are also a number of new glowing blocks throughout Minecraft dungeons and cities. And given that most of the fauna that we see here is bioluminescent, it's likely that those were the plants used in creating those lanterns. All of this usage by the invasive species overtaxed the available resources, which in turn left the end to start its slow, painful death spiral. It also didn't help that the builders hunted down the race of ender dragons to near extinction in order to make their elytra. Again, this is something that I went much more in depth into in a past theory. So if you're a bit confused or you want more detail oh, or you're just like, hey, I gotta see that. Matt Pat, that video is available for you right there. Anyway, I'm just interested. Like the packs in Yellowstone, when you eliminate an apex predator from an ecosystem, there's gonna be some unforeseen consequences, some dominoes that tip over that you didn't see coming. And here, it's the Endermites. You see, in the Minecraft Dungeons Echoing Void DLC, Endermites are are everywhere. They are literally crawling around the dimension. But in vanilla Minecraft, yeah. yeah. Not so much. They you don't see them like at all. Chance of spawning when you throw an Ender Pearl. So what happened here? Well, I suspect that by killing the Ender Dragon, the ancient builders killed off the Mites' only real predator in the dimension. And even worse, they probably gave them a massive feast. Hundreds of dead Ender Dragon carcasses that are all ready to be munched on, allowing the Ender Mites to reproduce and multiply at a rapid rate. And when the Ender Dragon carcasses were all gone, well, Mites are known to also eat plants, thereby leading the remaining fauna to be devoured by the bug. So huh. Once that was gone. There was just nothing left but a wasteland. The Endermites slowly began to die out, just like everything else in the dimension. The only ones that were able That's to survive. That's sad. Those Why? Pearls. It's all just a death. That researchers are able to find trapped inside of amber here in the real world. The pearl is thrown and shattered in the game, setting free the ancient bug kept preserved inside. Which brings me back to the thing that started the whole theory in the first place. That actually the makes some sense. In Minecraft legends, because while Mojang is claiming that greed is the reason for their invasion, knowing what we know now about the end, we can start to piece together a different picture. Sure, greed might be the impetus for this invasion, but not piglin greed. In the trailer, we see piglins charging through the portal, except they aren't all piglins that we recognize. One of them is a massive, very intimidating looking piglin that seems to be what happens if you give a piglin brute some steroids. This yeah. shows us that, just like what happened the, end, the piglins and the nether also used to have itself a greater variety of subspecies. It also appears like the piglins may have been able to bring through a greater variety of hog-like mobs to assist them, which would explain the hoglin stables that can be found in some bastion remnants. But by the time we reach regular Minecraft, piglin society has been reduced to a crumbling ruin. They're a species that hoards the last remnants of their most precious resource. This isn't about greed for gold, it's about resource guarding, a behavior that's able to be seen in dogs when they're insecure over losing access to something that they deem important. This yeah, food? Security showcased by the when you do that, and the obvious drop in when you do that dumb, like, food prank with your dogs, and you give them, like, maybe 
maybe like one or two pieces of the food that they really like and you put it in the dish then they're upset maybe that's a piglin that we see throughout the ecosystem points more towards the same issues that the end faced in dungeons resource depletion and ecosystem death the piglins may look like they're on the attack throughout these minecraft legends trailers but in reality they're the ones on the ropes and the reason for that the ancient builders i suspect that they were the aggressors here invading the nether taking what was down there and the only recourse that the piglins had was to go to the overworld to fight back or go extinct so if this is potentially true then why doesn't the game just come right out and say it well like the famous saying goes history is written by the victors i suspect the minecraft legends wow that, that is deep as well <laughs> we've just talked about the fact that the nether appears to also be facing biodiversity loss fewer piglin and hoglin subspecies a nether ecosystem that feels like it's being picked clean it's the exact same thing that faced the end throughout dungeons it was caused by ancient builders coming in and over farming resources so is it that much of a stretch to believe that the same thing is happening right now in the nether and immediately Immediately, you can start to connect the pattern here. The ancient builders arrive in a new dimension. They uh -huh. start farming its natural resources. They steal everything. Irreparable harm to the ecosystem, and then the ecosystem tries to fight back. First, we saw it with the Heart of Ender in Dungeons, and now we're seeing it with the Piglin invasion in Legends. So far, there hasn't been any indication that Legends will have us fighting in the Nether, but I suspect that at some point down the line in the DLC or something, we'll not only push the Piglin army back, but we'll chase them all the way to their homes in the Nether, and then yeah, probably the war off down there. In turn, we'll leave their bastions in ruins the crumbling remains of a once great society laid waste by the armies of the overworld and if that's the case if we are indeed the reason that the world was decimated of course we're not going to pass on the true reason to the villagers the ancient builders would brand themselves as the heroes exactly the why would you want to be labeled as a villain to unite the overworld in order to fight the inhumane invaders from below the surface and the villagers safe in their healthy overworld with its abundant resources wouldn't be any wiser they'd just be blissfully ignorant of the truth believing whatever they were told about the true reason these invaders were coming it was greed sure the pig-faced creatures wanted our gold and yeah it might have been greed but it wasn't the piglins who were greedy so is minecraft uh -oh. yes no, the legend is canon. I have no doubt this story persists among the villager communities, but the story itself of an invading pig army? No, it's fiction. Or at best, it's a half-truth. It hides the reality that resource-hungry overworlds came, saw, and conquered with zero regard for the species that lived there. Who would have ever suspected that this game all about building would have its roots tied to so much destruction? But hey, that's just a theory. Okay, that really does not theory. seem like a theory Thanks this time, Matt. And hey, if you're interested in some more Minecraft lore, check out the two videos that we've got on screen right we're not, now. So we're going to have to check both of those out. So I am very interested in those. Every single time I say I'm going to come back to these theory videos, and then I never do. I don't know. I don't know what happens. Like, I look at it, and I'm like, that would make a good idea for a video. And then, and then I just don't. I don't. I don't know. This one? This one did not seem like a theory, Matt, though. It really seemed like you had some major... Uh, insider information during this video because <laughs> a lot of that seems like it could be very very much accurate to the whole story of minecraft i'm i'm gonna think about this whole video i'll be back to you guys with my full video thoughts in a few minutes i'm not even gonna lie i would still adore to have even just maybe like just like one of those like maybe not even the mobs maybe just the terrain i would love just to have the terrain of the end in minecraft dungeons in regular vanilla minecraft y you can't tell me that that would not be cool just to even have the terrain like even if it spawned like 50,000 100,000 blocks out and you had to go find it i would have no problem with that it would give the end at least a little bit more of a purpose besides finding elytras Killing shulkers to get shulker boxes and maybe a couple blocks. I mean, realistically, that would give the end so much more of a purpose and maybe you could actually build in it for once in, instead of just having maybe an enderman farm there. Oh, how in the world does MatPat keep pulling these theories literally out of thin air? Like, I mean, I know that's pretty much what a theory is, is you pulling random stuff out of thin air and hoping it aligns with the story, but like... Some of this doesn't even seem like it's just a theory. Some of it seems like it would genuinely make sense if it was like actual lore inside of the game. Which, Mojang, please, please tell me in the future that this is going to be a part of the Minecraft lore at some point. I would love to see Matt Pat being correct on this. Anyway, though, that is really today's video. So if you guys did like today's video, go on down, leave it a like and a comment down below. Also, while you're in the comments, uh... 
normally I would say leave a video down there, but with how long it takes me to get videos out and how like late I am to some videos, by the time you recommend it, you might not even be interested, but I mean, it never hurts to leave a video down there in the comments anyway. Maybe I'll get to it. Anyway, though, I want to thank you all so much for watching today's video, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.